So tonight, as we sing the carols that we know and love, as we hear the story told, both the Old Testament prophets and the New Testament fulfillment, as we think again about what it means for Jesus to be light and life in a world that is so dark and dead, I ask that you would inspire us, remind us, humble us, encourage us, and then send us out with the light and the life of Jesus in us for those that need to see it and hear it around us. For it's in Jesus' name we need Let's stand together and let's sing Angels We Have Heard On High. <coughs> Chosen to use her to 
be the mother of his son. Would you sing it with us? Good news of great joy. Good news of great joy.
and he shall stand and shepherd his flocks in the strength of the Lord, in the majesty of the name of the Lord his God, and they shall dwell secure, for now he shall be great to the ends of the earth. Let's sing again about that little town of Bethlehem.
you will multiply the nations to give them the of joy. So they rejoice before you as the joy of the harvest, as they are glad when they find the poor. For the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulders, the rod of his oppressor, you have broken as on the day of mining. Every boot of the trampled warrior in battle turmoil, and every garment swollen with blood, we burn as fuel for the fire. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government, there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice, and with righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. The seal of the Lord of hosts will do this. We're going to sing together this new version of Come Not Long Expected Jesus we've been singing this month. So I hope that you'll sing it with us as we declare about that one that was so long awaited who came to be our great redeemer. Come thou long expected Jesus, born to set thy people free from our fears and sins we
and on earth, peace among those whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made unto us. And they went in haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby like the Lord.
born Bethlehem of Judea in the days of Pharaoh, Herod the king, and he was surprised him. From the east came the truth, and he went to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we saw the star in the rose and had come to worship him. When Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem with him. And assembling all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Christ was to be born. They told him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for so it is written by the prophet. And you, O Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For from you shall come, come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. They appeared some of the wise men secretly and ascertained from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem, saying, Go and search diligently for the child, and when you have found him, bring me word that I too may come and worship him. After listening to the king, they went on their way, and behold, the star that they had seen, when it rose, went before them until it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child, Mary his mother, and they fell down and worshipped. Then opening their treasures, they offered him gifts, gold and frankincense, and myrrh. And being warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they departed to the country by another way. glory, 
as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Thank you, Jesus. <clears throat> you know, I'm not a scientist. I'm a philosopher, historian, theologian. I barely pass my science classes. Don't even get me started about dissecting cats. I'm not even really good. But one of the things about science that, that I do remember from sweating through it in high school and a couple of college classes is the fact that there are principles that are so foundational to our existence that we even forget they're there. And one of those is the concept of light. It's almost silly to be asked, have you ever been in a room where the power had gone out and you found a flashlight or a candle or a lantern and you lit it and the dark was so dark that you couldn't see the candle. It never happens. Light always conquers darkness. By its very nature, it is. As a matter of fact, so much so that we define darkness as being the absence of light. Darkness itself has no form, no shape. It is really the absence of light. So when the Apostle John was being inspired by the Holy Spirit to try to help us understand the role of this Jesus, this baby born in the manger. In a flash of brilliance, God said to him, tell him that he is light. Because they'll be able to understand. Because beloved, I know most of you, but I don't know all of you. But yes, I know you because I know me. And I know that I live in the dark. There's darkness all around us. The absence of good, the absence of right, the absence of truth, the absence of justice. There's no one that would tell us that the world that we live in today is the way the world ought to be. But the darkness isn't just outside of us. There's darkness inside of us as well. We make dark decisions. We say dark, hurtful things. We have dark, evil thoughts. We make dark choices that hurt ourselves and hurt others. And we wrestle with trying to find some way to overcome that in our own lives. And we just can't, no matter how hard we try. We try to get a better education. We try to be trained in character qualities. All those are great, wonderful things, but we still find ourselves opting back to making those dark choices. And so John, inspired by God himself, said if you want to understand what Jesus is and who Jesus is in the midst of a dark world full of dark people living dark lives, think of him as light. You bring a light into a dark room and suddenly the room begins to feel more comfortable. When we were serving in uh, Cape City, Kentucky, if you ever been to Mammoth Cave, every time, I guess every tour of Mammoth Cave, you get into that big room, there's that big open space, and he says, I want you to understand what true darkness looks like, feels like. And they turn off all the lights, and it is black. I mean, there is not a hint of even the first fraction of light. I actually thought about doing that tonight, but I know we have a little bit of darkness can scare a little bit. Well, some of this scares a big one, too. Yeah. <laughs> because we get disoriented. If it's, if it's dark enough, before you know it, you can't tell up and down. Even though you know, you, you'll fall over. Because you have nothing to orient yourself to. There's nothing you can see that can give you a point of reference. And that's what light does. Light can shine through thousands of light years of vast emptiness and still shine to the point that we can see it, the point that we can use it as a guiding star to follow so we don't get lost when we're out camping or in the ocean. It brings comfort, and it brings orientation, and it brings reference, and it brings a way to see ourselves and the world around us the way they actually are, not the way that we wish they were. Isn't it amazing that, and I'm not a, I'm not a scholar of world religions, I've done as much studying as I probably want to do, but I've done a lot of studying of world religions. Have you ever noticed that every religion 
places God at some vast distance away from humans. Whether it's Mount Olympus, whether it is some dimension off somewhere else, the gods are always away from us. They are far from us. And even we, as Christians, create a place... No, no, I'm sorry. I almost made a mistake. We didn't create heaven, but we created a definition of heaven that had it way off somewhere in some vast distance. When everything that Jesus did was to say, look, don't you understand? Eternity is right here. He said the kingdom of God is right here in your midst. God is not some distant, far-off deity sitting on a golden throne with his arms crossed waiting to see whether you do good enough or not to deserve to come into his presence. Jesus came to say, no, God is here with you. And all you have to do is call out to him. Oh, heaven is real. And I don't know where Jesus is now because Jesus, after his resurrection and ascension, went somewhere in a physical body that's not here. But I do not believe that God is some vast deity sitting on the throne a million miles away from us. I believe that by coming in the form of that babe, sending his son fully God, fully man, he said, all you have to do is reach out. That word receive in the verses that I just read doesn't mean to agree with something. It doesn't mean to accept a concept. It means to truly envelop something into your life. When someone gives you a gift, it can lay on the table until you receive it and make it your own. Christ came to remind us that God wants to have a relationship with us. Our darkness has separated us from Him. There's no way we can bridge that gap. So He does for us what we can't do for ourselves. He bridges the gap. He comes to us and says, if you will accept me as your son, if you will accept me as your king, if you will accept me as the Lord of your life, if you will accept the fact that I know more about what's good for you than you know about what's good for you. You see this Jesus that was a baby grew up died a death that we should have died. Took a punishment that we should have had because we've all done dark things. And Jesus took that upon Himself. Died for us. So that we then could claim His death as our own. So that we could have life for God. Not because of anything we deserve, not because of anything we did. Purely because He loves us. Amen. Enough to say this. Why? So what we're going to do is we're going to take our candles and I'm going to invite any of our deacons that are here that would to come forward. And as we sing Silent Night, I want you to pass the light to yourself to the next person. The person next to you. Because that's another reminder, isn't it? This is how the light is spread. This is how the truth of Jesus is spread. It's spread from one person to another, to another, to another, to another, to another. Someone, if you're a follower of Christ, someone told you at some point how you can do that. And someone told them so they could tell you, and someone told them so they could tell them so they could tell you. And it goes all the way back to the first light bearers. Those who saw Jesus himself. And then they began to share that message. And it continues to spread in so as we sing, and as you light the candle of the person next to you, and, and it goes on, just remind, let that be reminded of you. This is how the truth of the light of the world is spread. By sharing of God's love. So as we sing, we'll start lighting our candles and praising.
say to you tonight, if you are in a silent night, if you are sitting in your mind's eye alone in the dark place, please know that Jesus wants to be your life. If you'd like to stay after we're done and talk about that, I'd be glad to do it. If you'd like to call this week, you're welcome to do that. Or come by our church office one day next week after the first of the year. We'd be glad to talk about how you can know that life. You do not have to wander in the That's what I'm saying. I'm going to ask Jim if he would. Would you reach up and, Jim Trantham, <coughs> would you reach up and turn the lights off for us, please? Because y'all lit these pretty candles, we might as well see them, right? <laughs> Would you stand with us? We're going to sing Joy to the World together. <laughs> there we go. Let's sing together Joy to the World.